The 2000s was an interesting time for cinema, but let's face it, it was an interesting time in general. In the realm of horror, the beginning of the aught saw an influx of remakes of J-horror. Some bad, some pretty decent. However, with the post-9-11 culture climate, heightening anxieties and desensitization to violence due to real-world events, another genre emerged, tapping into the darker side of human nature. First coined by David Edelstein in a 2006 article in New York Magazine, Torture porn took the roots of exploitation and splatter films of the 70s and 80s and reintroduced the mainstream audiences to a new level of explicit brutality. Films like Saw, Hostel, The Devil's Rejects, and The New Extremity of French Horror were raw and unapologetic looks at human depravity. It was everywhere. I mean, there was a time when you couldn't even go more than a year without having a Saw film. While the popularity of this subgenre began to overstay its welcome by the late 2000s and being replaced with found footage, one film came onto the scene that was seemingly overlooked. When The Collector was released in 2009, audiences had already moved on from the overly violent films. Hell, I was one of them. Although it had poor reviews and a low box office take, the movie eventually got a reappraisal and is deemed a cult classic with its smart take with a blend of home evasion films and torture porn. While it didn't make blockbuster numbers, it did exceed its $3 million budget, which led filmmaker Marcus Dunstan to continue on with this story. Today's film not only had three times the budget of The Collector, it also has one of the craziest kill scenes for a wide release movie. Watch out for those random boxes and be wary of those blades in the underground rave as we discover what happened with the collection. We do have real blades for it, but uh, we, there was never a requirement for us to use them. So. In 2005, Marcus Dunstan and co-scribe Patrick Melton won season three of Project Greenlight with their screenplay, Feast. After an executive discovered the writers and was impressed with one of their unproduced screenplays, they were hired to write Saw 4 and the following sequels up to Saw 3D. That unproduced screenplay, The Midnight Man, was originally shopped around as a prequel to Saw, but after the idea was dismissed, it was reworked into The Collector. That film tells the story of a man named Arkin who was hired by a family to fix their new home. While owing a large sum of money to some loan sharks, Arkin plans to break into the family's home to steal a valuable ruby. However, when he arrives, he finds a sadistic maniac has imprisoned the family and wife and has set up traps all over the house. The film was originally set up by Dimension Films, but after the cash-strapped studio didn't have the funds to release the film, LD Entertainment bought the rights and gave it a brief theatrical run where it made $10.2 million on its $3 million budget. While not a complete success compared to the likes of heady hitters like Saw, it did well enough but really found its audiences on DVD. While in the middle of working on Saw 3D, Producer Mickey Liddell asked Dunstan and Melton to follow up their movie with triple the budget. They agreed and went into the project with the film Aliens as their inspiration, making it bigger and more action-oriented. Their intention for this sequel was to make a film that would work even for the people who didn't see the first one. Returning to this sequel is Josh Stewart as Arkin, whose character was last seen taken by The Collector. Along with Stewart are Emma Fitzpatrick, Lee Turgeson, and Christopher McDonald. The Collector was Josh Stewart's first starring role, and he has since appeared in a few Christopher Nolan films and several episodes of Criminal Minds. Emma Fitzpatrick first hit the big screen with The Social Network, and while her filmography is slim on the horror front, she appeared in the 2015 movie Bloodsucking Bastards along with Pedro Pascal. Turgesson has been around for quite a while, dating all the way back to Point Break in 1991. Although he is best known for his role as Beecher in Oz, he also appeared in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning and an episode of Masters of Horror directed by Tom Holland. The biggest name in this movie is Christopher McDonald. McDonald is known for more comedic roles, and seeing him in a horror movie was surprising. While he was in the faculty, I will always attribute him to Shooter McGavin. Good for Happy Gilmore, oh my god! The movie opens with news reports of a manhunt for a serial killer known as The Collector, who kills his victims using a series of elaborate traps and keeps the ones he wants as trophies. Meanwhile, teenage Elena is invited out to an underground rave. After witnessing her boyfriend there with another girl, she storms off into another room where she finds a mysterious red trunk. She opens it to find a severely injured Arkin from the previous movie. Opening this box then sets off a deadly trap of blades that mowed down the entire group of partygoers on the dance floor. 
Amid the bloodbath, Arkin manages to escape while the Collector takes Elena. At the hospital, Arkin is taken into police custody and placed under constant watch due to his criminal background. He is soon approached by Lucillo, the trusted aide of Elena's wealthy father, Mr. Peters. He has assembled a team of mercenaries to track down the Collector and save Elena before it's too late. He promises Arkin that helping them locate the Collector's lair will clear his criminal record. Previously, while being held captive by the Collector, Arkin has memorized their route to the hideout by marking his arm with cuts. Using these markings, he guides the mercenary team to the Collector's lair. Every corner of the facility is a potential death trap, showcasing the Collector's sadistic ingenuity. As the team ventures deeper into the lair, they encounter various grotesque scenes and captured victims each suffering from the Collector's cruel experiments. The atmosphere is tense and oppressive, and danger lurks behind every door around every corner. The mercenaries, despite their training and weaponry, find themselves outmatched by the Collector's home-field advantage and his relentless pursuit to maintain control over his domain. One of the standout features of the collection is the commitment to practical effects. The special effects team led by coordinator David Fletcher is meticulously crafted to create a visceral and immersive experience. Fletcher's resume is beyond extensive and goes all the way back to The Running Man in 1987. The traps are ingeniously designed, combining practical effects with minimal CGI to maintain a realistic and gritty feel. The best moment is the nightclub massacre at the beginning of the film. It's a complex sequence involving numerous extras, stunts, and practical effects to create a chaotic and horrifying scene. The rotating combine rake took a couple weeks to design. Once the design was finished, it was sent off to be cut by water jets and put together like a massive erector set. Although the blades were made of rubber, they also had a real set of blades on hand. For this scene alone, production had over 50 gallons of fake blood, which they shot out of air mortars along with fake guts. Another star of the show is Gary J. Tunnicliffe, the special effects makeup designer. He has been working with Dunstan ever since Feast, but has been in the game a lot longer than that. My personal favorite is his work as the makeup sculptor on Ginger Snaps. Not only did he design the collector's mask, but he crafted full bodies to be put on display in the trophy room. It's that kind of work and dedication you just can't achieve with CGI. The combination of the attention of detail and the abandoned hotel's construction, the intricacy of the traps and the realistic gore effects all contributed to the film's chilling atmosphere. These elements, combined with the effective use of lighting and sound, ensured that the collection stood out as a visually and viscerally impactful entry into the horror genre. The collection was released in November 2012 and received mixed reviews. Some critics praised its inventive traps, fast pace, and continuation of a dark narrative from the first film, but some felt it relied too heavily on gore and shock value. Despite this, the film developed a cult following, particularly among horror enthusiasts who appreciate the blend of action and horror. Because of the cult success, there was a considerable excitement about continuing the story, especially with how the collection ended. In 2019, Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton announced a third film, The Collected, aiming at bringing back the key characters, including Josh Stewart and Emmett Fitzpatrick. Filming began in September 2019, but production encountered several setbacks. After shooting only a few days, the process was abruptly halted. Details about the reasons for these delays have been sparse, but industry insiders point to a combination of financial difficulties, scheduling conflicts, and creative differences. As months turned to years, fans of the series were left in suspense. Occasional updates from the filmmakers suggest a persistent desire to complete the project, but concrete progress remained elusive. As for now, The Collected remains unfinished. Until that day comes, we have at least two solid films in the series. If you have only seen the first movie or completely skipped it like I originally did, it's a creative little horror movie worth checking out. And when you're finished with that, definitely check out The Collection. With Dunstan and Melton's go big or go home approach to crafting a horror sequel, I felt like they more than achieved.